Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. My name is Jason, and today we're going to talk about the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP. And so how ARP works and, and what it's for, so you have, say, two uh, servers, desktops, doesn't matter. Uh, let's just say we have a couple PCs uh, on a Ethernet LAN. And they have a MAC address, let's say, you know, AAA, and this one has a MAC address of BBB. And so that's their physical layer address that's uh, usually burned into a NIC, although in, in later versions of um, like Linux and, and stuff, you can virtualize that Mac if you want to. Uh, I don't know if you can do that in Windows, but uh, you can in Linux and, and on your Mac, you can create yourself a, a virtual NIC uh, to uh, do all kinds of uh, useful or nefarious things. Uh, but um, in this case, so this is a PC1 and this is PC2 and Let's say his address is 1.10, and let's say his is 1.11, and they want to communicate over the IP protocol. Well, if he sends um, a request out on the wire, uh, that's an ARP request, because he doesn't know the address, he doesn't know the physical address of this, uh, of this IP address. So he sends out an ARP request, and that ARP request essentially says, who has 192.168.1.11? And in that ARP request, that's a broadcast, so everybody on this local area network will get that request. And uh, ideally, the way the protocol is written, only the one who actually owns that address will respond. And so he'll respond with an ARP response, and he'll say, I have that, and so then the PC1 will build in his ARP table, um, he'll build the um, 192.168.1.11 is at BBB, and likewise PC2 will add to his ARP table um, that 192.168.1.10 is at AAA. And so they have uh, that in their ARP table, and now they can communicate um, uh, from PC to PC. Now, where this gets a little more interesting is in the environment to where we'll have, say, a server. So we have S1 and S2, and then we have a router, and then an IP address, let's say we have, um, you know, something out here in the cloud. So we have a connection out there. And so, uh, again, this is 192.168.1.11 and 192.168.1.12. And let's say this is 192.168.1.1. And so in this case, when he says, um, uh, he's done a DNS lookup, DNS comes back and says, hey, for ESPN.com, because I want to look up if the Cubs lost, uh, which is a very important thing for me to look up while they're in the playoffs, because I'm a big Cardinals fan. And uh, so he looks up and he gets the address, says, okay, that's at 8.9.10.11. No idea if that's the real address, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So he says in his ARP request, who has that? Who has that IP? And of course, nobody on the local network has that, but this being the default gateway, he'll say, hey, I have that. And so he'll respond with, let's say, CCC. And so he'll respond down, oh, actually down to server one, and then server one will send that traffic out that way. So, you know, it works the same way as over here, no big deal, but then, what happens if I add another router because I want a redundancy for my gateways so that just in case this router fails, I can still get out to the internet. And so in the event this router goes away, then this is say 192.61.2 with a MAC address of DDD. Well, I already have um, my default gateway 
is 1.1 and, and I'm gonna go to CCC. So I'm sending that traffic here, this has failed, I'm still sending that traffic here because I don't have any kind of a, a way initially until my ARP cache expires that I need to send that to a different gateway. And so, so there's a, a, an issue of, of um, or a time to where I might have some unavailability. And this is where protocols like HSRP, VRRP, and um, you know, F5's uh, Mac Masquerade configuration. Can I spell that right? I don't know. But um, uh, the big IP. So if we make these big IPs, so this routing function is a big IP here. Ooh, I, okay. And a big IP here. And then I configure Mac Masquerade. I'm going to have, say, 1.1 and 1.2, but I'll say right here in the middle, I'm going to have 192.168.1. Uh, let's say 100, and that Mac is going to be shared, and that's EE. So this is a virtual, it's a shared IP alias between these two, and it's a shared MAC address that's unique on the network that we have created. And that way, if this router goes away, then this router will send a gratuitous ARP, meaning it's not solicited. Normally, these servers down here are asking, hey, where is this IP address? Well, a gratuitous ARP is an unsolicited ARP because it knows because of the failover mechanisms established between these two big IPs that the, the one that was active is no longer active. And so it sends a gratuitous ARP out to the network and it says, hey, I have this IP address and MAC address. And so what's interesting about this is that both of these servers already have in their table uh, 192.168.1.100 EEE. -E. Both of those are in the ARP table. So there's no ARP table necessary to be updated. The difference is, is all the switches in this infrastructure, you know, have switch here, switch here. Um, normally in their forwarding tables, they would have pointed to the interface that's connected to this switch to this big IP. And in the failover, now they're going to update their tables when this gratuitous ARP comes through and says, hey, this IP address, I've got it. And so it's going to send the traffic then this way. And then if there's more switches in the infrastructure, as that broadcast makes it through, makes its way through the broadcast domain in these switches, it knows to then send uh, appropriately. And so whereas the, the servers themselves are not updating anything, the switching infrastructure between them and the big IPs are getting their updates so that gets to where it needs to be. So anyway, that's a, a very short synopsis of how the address resolution protocol works. Hopefully this has been informative and we'll see you guys out there in the community.